Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video we're going to be talking about this. This is a sponge filter. We get a lot of questions about sponge filters, how to assemble them, where to place them in the tank, what type of flow we need. And so we're going to try to answer all of those questions in this video. It's basically going to be in everything you've ever wanted to know about sponge filters, so stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We do a lot of videos just like this on fish tank filtration, water parameters, species profiles, fish room tours, fish store tours. With 60 fish tanks in our fish room, we've always got something going on. So at first glance, the sponge filter seems like a really easy thing to run in a fish tank, and for the most part it is, but we get a lot of questions about the details of running a sponge filter, and that's what we're gonna answer in this video. So here, we've got a sponge filter, now there's a, different, there's a couple different parts to a sponge filter. I want to go over the parts and pieces, how to assemble it, and then where we're going to put it in the tank, how much flow we need, and we'll try to answer all of those questions. So here we've got a couple things going on. We can disassemble this sponge filter, and I want to take it completely apart. Now, the first thing you have at the very, very bottom, let's just take it from the bottom up, we've got a weighted base. This is going to allow us to hold the sponge filter down. The second thing that we have is this bottom part here, and this can actually come apart, we have this extension. You don't need this extension if you have a short tank. If you've got a, a higher tank and it's not gonna impede and flow, I like to use these because it keeps the actual sponge from contacting the substrate. So this piece just fits right on here. It goes right on the base just like this. So again, we're just lifting off the sponge a little bit off the substrate. But again, if you've got a shorter tank and this piece is causing your sponge filter to like maybe stick out the top of the tank, don't worry about it. You don't need this, this piece right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there just like this. And then we've got a plastic piece here, and this is kind of like the internal part of the sponge filter. And so we just stick this on just like this. Once we have this assembled, now we've got the sponge itself. And we'll go over the different sizes of sponges that you might need. By the way, in the comments or in the description below, I will put in a whole bunch of other links to videos where we've talked about different types of filtration, hang on the back filters, matten filters. We've done a lot of comparison videos. I've talked about how much filtration you actually need in a fish tank. I will put that probably in the upper right hand corner here and then also in the description below. So here you've got your sponge and there are different types, different sizes. This just slides right over just like this. And then we have this piece here. It's the other half and you can just kind of feel around and this kind of clicks into place. Now, depending on the brand of sponge filter you have, that might be a little bit different, but for the most part here, we've got a somewhat assembled sponge filter. Now, the next thing we're gonna need, we are going to need the top part, and this is the part where the hose is actually gonna connect. Now, here's where we get some questions. First thing, we put this thing on here just like this. Now, you could, in theory, just run some airline hose, connect this, connect the other half, to a pump, you're all done. A lot of people do that, but the questions we often get is should we use an air stone inside the sponge? And if you're gonna do that, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna take this piece here and then cut a small piece of hose. Now, the hose that you're gonna cut is just gonna be a little bit shorter than the internal part of the sponge itself. This is probably a little bit long. I might wanna cut this off, so let's go ahead. I've got my handy dandy scissors here. Boom, cut off a little piece. So maybe you want it about this long. Now the idea is, by doing that, you could connect this, this little piece here to the inside of the top piece. So it's kind of hanging down like this. And then you could take an air stone and connect that to this. Now, I highly recommend these are never clog air stones. I get these from Aquarium Co-op. They're pretty awesome. I will put a link to that in the description below because I really like these things much more than a standard air stone. Now, this thing would just kind of slide on just like this. Now, this thing would just go in just like this. The idea here is that by using an air stone, we break up some of the bubble. One of the things that can happen with a sponge filter is as the bubbles are coming out, sometimes they come out kind of large, you get that bubbling noise, people sometimes don't like that. By using an air stone, you break that up, and I'm gonna show you that in a moment when we go around the fish room and I show you the difference between the two, but you break up some of those bubbles and they don't come out quite so, so loud. So you can do that, you do not have to. The other idea is by having the bubbles start further down the sponge filter, you increase the flow. And so essentially what's happening with a sponge filter is it's sucking water through the sponge 
This sponge here is surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow. And so you're sucking the water through the sponge and it's coming out the top. In the process of that, as you're getting water flow, the beneficial bacteria can convert ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. I've done a video on the nitrogen cycle and why that's important. I'll put that up in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. Water comes out the top. So the idea is the further down the bubbles start, the more flow you're going to get. So the other question we get a lot is, should you use the uplift tube? Now the uplift tube, it fits on right here. The idea here is the more uplift you have, again, the more flow you're gonna have through your sponge filter. There are, dis there are advantages and disadvantages to using this. Obviously the advantage is you're getting more flow as you get more uplift through the sponge filter itself. But obviously now this is a pretty tall sponge filter, right? And if you've got a shorter tank, you can certainly cut these things down. We've done that in many of our tanks. If you have a really short tank, then I wouldn't worry about these. It's not 100% necessary. Is it gonna give you a little bit more flow? Yes. However, there are some things that can happen. One, fish can get caught in here. Now, could you put something on the top of this or an, or an L shape uh, and then put a screen on there? Absolutely. If you just leave it like this, often our plecos are inside of here. They don't care, it's fine, they always get out. But I have had fish that get bullied and they find their way into these tubes and they get stuck. So it is a possibility they get stuck. Could you put some type of a covering on here to prevent that? Absolutely. So the idea here then, if you're going to use the uplift tube, is you're gonna want, if this is your hose for your that's going to your pump, you're gonna to wanna to run this through first. And I would highly recommend doing this outside the tank because once you get these things all wet, it's really hard to assemble. You just push the airline tubing right into the top of this thing here. Then this goes on. Again, this is going to your pump. You're all ready to go. So assembly, super, super simple. So the two main points, do you need the uplift tube? You do not need it. It's not necessary, but it will increase the flow through the sponge filter. Do you need to have an air stone inside? No, but again, it will help increase the flow through the sponge filter. In our fish room, we've got them both ways. What tends to happen, and one thing you might wanna watch out for, is especially if you're using this inside the sponge filter, some airline tubing, it starts to get really brittle after a while. I'm, I'm saying after maybe a year and a half, two years, and then these things just keep falling out of the bottom every time you go to, to clean these things, and then you wind up having to replace that, but it's not a big deal, so maybe every year and a half or two, you're gonna have to replace that airline tubing. Some airline tubing is a little bit softer. Maybe you won't have to replace it as often. So what we're gonna do now is I wanna go ahead and take a walk around the fish room and show you where we place the sponge filters and what kind of flow we're using in each one of our tanks. Now, as we take a walk around the fish room and I show you a couple of examples, something you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind, we have a central air system because we've got so many tanks in our basement. If you were just using a pump, I highly recommend, and I don't necessarily recommend this brand per se, but I would highly recommend if you can get a pump with an adjustable airflow, that could certainly be helpful. It will allow you to adjust the flow based on your bio load and based on the size of your tank and the flow that you require. This certainly is a helpful feature. Okay, so let's take a look at some of our tanks. I think the first thing that we wanna see is if you look at our tanks, for the most part, our sponge filters are all placed around the corners of the tank. That's really an aesthetics thing for us. Ideally, if you wanted to get the most flow, you'd probably want to place your sponge filter right in the center of the tank, but that would look horrible. So in most of our tanks, unless we've got three sponge filters, like in our 125s, the sponge filters are off in the corners. It works out just fine. Now, currently in our fish room, we are running a lot of the ATI Hydro brand sponge filters. We get this question a lot, what do we do about size? Well, if it's a very small tank, and you wanna run a sponge filter, the Hydro Zeros work really well. We've got those in both of our beta two and a half gallon tanks. They work just fine. For the most part, when we're running 10 gallon tanks, I really like the Hydro Ones. They're shorter, they're more compact, they work out great. Again, I've got that video on how much filtration you actually need. When we're choosing a sponge filter, it really is all about the bio load. How many fish do you have in the tank? How often are you feeding? Are they gonna be kicking up a lot of stuff from the substrate if they are interacting with the substrate at all? That's gonna have an impact on the size of the sponge filter you need. For the most part, sponge filters do an awesome job at biological filtration. They're gonna have surface area for beneficial microbes to grow you can probably get away with a much smaller sponge filter, something we discuss in the how much filtration you actually need video, than you need, than what's usually recommended. 
we use larger sponge filters and increase the flow if we have tanks that are more heavily stocked. So for instance, our 75 gallon Embuna tank, by the way, it also has a hang on the back filter, but the sponge filters are a little bit larger. They have a little bit more flow to compensate for all that extra bio load. Same thing with our sponge filters in our 125. Again, there's a hang on the back filter there, really strictly for mechanical filtration, but the sponge filters are larger. They have more flow so we can get more particulate matter going through the sponge filter, more water to convert more ammonia to a nitrite, nitrite to nitrate as well. But in some of our tanks where there isn't as many inhabitants or they're smaller, you can see the sponge filters aren't flowing quite as heavily. So the sponge filter, the Hydro 1s are really good for 10s. By the time we get to the 20s, I really like the Hydro 2s. They work out well, sometimes a Hydro 3 if we're using, you know, if we've got a little bit heavier load. Beyond that, once we get into the 40s and above, now we're looking at the Hydro 4s and 5s. How many sponge filters do I use? Often I just use one. Some of the tanks that are more heavily stocked, I might use two. In our 125s, often I use three. One of the big questions we get, what about the flow? How much water should we be pumping through these sponge filters? This is not a question that can be answered easily. It really depends on a few things. How much do you want to hear? The more flow you have coming through a sponge filter, the more bubbling noises you're going to hear. Now for us in the basement, I don't care. It's not something I worry about uh, in terms of the, the amount of noise. They're sponge filters. We got a lot of tanks. It's a fish room. If this is in your bedroom, you might not want as much flow because you're going to be hearing those noises. If you put an elbow at the end of that uplift tube, it's going to cut down potentially a little bit on the noise, but not completely. The amount of flow you have, as I've already mentioned, is also going to depend on the stocking level. The more stocking you have in that tank, the more particulate matter you have in that tank floating around the water column, the more flow you're probably going to want to have. If you have fish that are sensitive to high flow, you might want to turn that down a little bit. So things like uh, long fin guppies or bettas or maybe angelfish that really don't like a lot of flow throughout the tank, maybe you're going to turn that down a little. Now let me show you the difference between a sponge filter that has an air stone and one that does not. Here you can see this sponge filter without the air stone, it's bubbling pretty aggressively. Now part of that's due to the flow, but the bubbles are large. If I had the audio on, you would hear a lot more bubbling noise. So this is what's happening without an air stone. This air stone fell out of the sponge filter, so it's just I haven't put it back in. Now here we see sponge filters that have air stones. You can see the bubbles are smaller. The flow is still really aggressive. The noise is drastically reduced. So again, this is the advantage to having an air stone inside the sponge filter. But again, if you're going to do that, highly recommend use a never clog air stone. That way you're not having to replace these things and causing unnecessary back pressure on your air pump. The other thing that you should consider when you're using a sponge filter is ideally you don't want your pump to be below tank level. In our fish room, our air pump, our central system is above the highest tank. I would highly recommend one of two things. If you're going to be using a sponge filter with air, don't put the sponge filter on the ground unless you have a check valve. What can happen is if the power goes out, you could potentially have water that siphons through the sponge filter back down. You could flood your floor. It's very uncommon, but it can happen. So a check valve, it's like a dollar. I would get a check valve to make sure that water can't backflow through your system. If not, make sure your, your air pump is higher than your, the top of your tank. And then obviously water's not gonna be able to go up against gravity if the power goes out. So just something to keep in mind. All right, everyone, so I hope I answered most of your questions when it comes to sponge filters. They're great. Again, I've done a lot of comparisons. Check those out in the description below if you're trying to figure out whether or not you should go with a sponge filter or a hang on the back or a matten filter or an under gravel filter or a canister filter. We've done all of those comparisons down in the description below. Check those out. If you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. And this would drop right into your sponge filter. Now, this just goes in. Oops.